What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was already thinking about doing this video and I got a super chat in my live stream earlier that actually requested it. And I was like, you know what, what the hell, let me look at everything and try to compile the 20. Because I do this annually where I talk about the, you know, my current 20 favorites in my collection. This is the hardest it's ever been. So many great fragrances that I thoroughly love and enjoy had to get left out. Some of these are repeats that stick in this list and then a lot of new stuff. A lot of new stuff that I've gotten over the last year since I revamped the top 20 favorites in my collection. So, uh, it's harder than you may think. Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. So one that continues to impress me when it comes to a fresh fragrance with some depth would be Brioni Eau de Parfum Eclat. I mean, I've featured this one many times. I've recommended it many times. Uh, my friend Justin sold me on this one. I bought it. I fell into adding to the hype on it myself. It's so good. Beautiful grapefruit, pink pepper combination at the top. It's not overdone with Ambroxan. It ties in very well to this clean musk. Um... And there's a little bit of a smoky nuance from some Olaban. I'm like, it's, it's straightforward, but it also has a deep character to it for being a fresh fragrance. It's a um, classy casual, as I like to call it. Like, it has some elegance to it, but it still has a laid-back feel at the same time. This is actually my favorite of the four, even though it's not the one I've given the highest score to. It's the one that I reach for the most and gravitate to in most cases. Just a beautiful fragrance. Brioni Eau de Parfum Eclat. Next, there was no two ways about it. This was going to be in here. This is my favorite fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier. It is Le Beau Le Parfum, a sweet tropical fragrance. You get pineapple and coconut. You get fresh greens uh, from the cypress note. It's not overly floral, though it has iris. It gives a little bit of a soapy, slightly powdery feel because most of the powder, I think, comes from that sweet tonka bean note that is kind of the star of the show when it comes to Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances. Man, look, it smells synthetic. It doesn't smell like an expensive fragrance or anything like that. And it's not easy to find, and it's not all that cheap. Performs really good. Just one of the kind of staples of this past summer for me. I'm a big fan of it. This might be a little sweeter than some people would like in high heat, humidity summers. But man, I love it. I've worn this to the beach. I've worn this eating beach side. It's just, it's such a vibe. I'm such a huge fan of this fragrance. I'm excited to see what Paradise Garden, the newest LeBeau flanker, is going to be like at the recording of this. It's not out yet, but it has been announced. Man, this is just some really good stuff. If you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. If you like Sweet Tropical, this is that. It is Sweet Tropical. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier, LeBeau Le Parfum. Now, when I just had a decant, I was like, okay, this is my favorite, Stronger With You. Then I got Stronger With You, absolutely, and I was like, no, this is my favorite. Then I finally got a bottle of Strong With You Leather, and it's like, no, no. My first thought is the, the real thought here. Strong With You Leather is my favorite version of this scent profile. I do enjoy the entire line. There has not been a single subpar miss in this line. Not even Only. Only, I think, has its merit and is quite nice, and that's actually my least favorite of the bunch. But this soft brown leather accord to go with this sweet, spicy, roasted chestnut kind of DNA great performance like this is this is my kind of designer fragrance right here i'm such a huge fan um you know it's all a subjective taste driven type of thing but really i could pick anyone on any any given day in this line and say that's my favorite and be comfortable going with that but more times than not this is what the answer would be so i felt like this was the one from the line to feature because i had to have something from the strong with you line because like i said before it's one of my favorite fragrance lines for men and all of perfumery, let alone designers. It's just a beautiful fragrance that I would encourage you to try. It's not easy to get a hold of, but it does pop up from time to time in stock at different discounters. And that's Stronger With You Leather from Emporio Armani. Now, I really tried to reel it in with Mancera, but I didn't want to limit myself because it doesn't come down to, you know, one from each house. It's like, what's my favorites? My 20 favorites. So I've actually got four Manceras in this video, and that's me trying to be modest because I love Mancera. But French Riviera, I fell in love with this fragrance over this past spring going into summer. This is one of my favorite Mancera pickups of last year, and I picked up at probably 20 fragrances from Mancera. This is such a laid-back, casual summertime vibe. It's a fresh, watery citrus, a creamy, soft, and powdery floral with some nice musk 
a little bit of woodiness to it. This is so good. Such a clean, aquatic vibe. I'm just such a fan. Without being heavily salty, like it's not a real strong marine saltwater accord, um, but offers a ton of freshness. It's not an overwhelming monster in performance, but it does have its staying power. This is so beautiful. I love this fragrance. This is one of the most recommended fragrances on this channel in 2023. And uh, it still fetches a decent penny for typical Mancera prices from discounters. It's still around 100, bu 100 bucks every time you find it online, but so worth it to me. Absolutely one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. It's Mancera's French Riviera. Now, I got this one not that long ago. I do find it to be somewhat superior to Aventus. I don't care who likes me hearing that or not. This is my favorites, and Mind Games Blockade is definitely one of my current favorites. This is so good. Such a beautiful spiced fruit smell. Mango, pineapple, other citruses. I believe there's even some apple with some spices, a little bit of green, uh, a little bit of musk, but no real heavy smokiness or anything. Oh, just beautiful spiced fruits, basically. Undeniably resembles Aventus, but I like this spin on it a bit more. I've always kind of, even though I love smoky fragrances when it comes to Aventus types, like uh, BondNumber9.com, a more fruity take on Aventus, like stuff like that, just to give you one quick example, I seem to like more than actual Aventus, though I love and respect Aventus. I think it's one of the greatest DNAs, if not the greatest DNA of all time, because every twist and turn anybody ever does with it seems to come out really good. No matter how cheap or expensive. And in this case, it's expensive, but it's a beautiful fragrance that I haven't had that long, but I'm sure as hell loving it. And that's Mind Games Blockade. One that will per forever be a permanent fixture in a video topic like this, because even though I don't wear it all the time, I go through spurts where I go to reaching for it. It is Salvatore Ferragamo's Aqua Essenziale Blue. It's still one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. That is not going to change anytime soon. I just love it. I don't wear it during the high heat summer, but spring, fall, most of the time when you'll see it pop up in my fragrance rotation, it's still so good. Really good performer on my skin, eight, nine hours easily, uh, two hours of solid projection. And then on top of that, it's a sweet powdery citrus blue. So you're going to get a powdery tonka bean lavender combo. It's not too soapy. You get a little bit of citrus. Cipriol oil offers a little bit of an earthy green tone with some woods. This one's kind of my style. It's like a, if it was there's such a thing as a less aquatic, less smoky Dylan Blue, it's kind of in the same vein. Though it doesn't smell exactly like Dylan Blue. I'm not saying that. I would say this is kind of an alternative in some ways to it. But my favorite Ferragamo fragrance, my favorite affordable blue still to this day, you just can't go wrong here. This is, again, one of the most recommended fragrances on this channel, and it's still one of my favorites. Salvatore Ferragamo, Aqua Senziale Blue. Now, I've been raving about this one a lot lately. I would hope that lets you know that I'm really, really, really digging this one as of late. Paris Corners Care Pistachio. I love the way this smells. I do little random test sprays at night on my arm all the time. This is such a great fragrance. This is a clone of Cali's Young Pistachio Gelato. Booze, spice, mintiness, florals, pistachio ice cream, pistachio gelato, whichever you'd like to say, smells the same to me. Um, cotton candy whipped cream, there's musk, there's a little bit of everything here. It's a playfully sweet, somewhat gourmand fragrance that leans a little feminine because it's full of bright, airy sweetness and florals. I get that, but it just, we're spraying that again. It smells so good. <sighs> Man, I love this one, and I keep talking about it. Some of you that watch, you know, there's people that watch every single video I put out, so you guys have seen me talk about this one a lot, and I appreciate you, but... Man, this is good stuff. This is my favorite release from Paris Corner in 2023. I have no idea how accurate it is to the KLE fragrance, and I could care less. I really could care less how accurate of a clone it is because just judging it by itself, this is an awesome aroma. When you just want one of those fun fragrances, just to put a smile on your face, just to be different, this is that fragrance for me as of late. And that's Paris Corner. Let me get that to focus. There we go care pistachio i was very much blown away by this mancera fragrance when i got it it was heavily recommended it had been on my want list for several years and it's one of the best iris fragrances i've ever smelled very animalic and funky too it's mancera black prestigium so this has a funky oud rich leather dark smokiness violet and iris combination it's nice and powdery and floral there's a little bit of rose here but it's more about iris and violet than anything else 
It's, it's so not for everyone, but it's also one of the most magnificently unique floral fragrances I have ever smelled. Oh, absolute powerhouse too. Like I said, a little bit of oud funk, nice dose of leather. That's not too animalistic, but it's definitely not some soft, supple, like luxury purse type of leather smell. Uh, it's got some rawhide elements to it. Nice, rich, smoky tone. It's not overdone. It's not too spicy of a fragrance. It's not too floral of a fragrance. This makes a statement. This is a super situational fragrance. In the next five years, I might wear this fragrance three to five times. I'm just being straight with you. But every time, it's going to be a very special occasion. It's going to be a special moment to wear because I'm going to love every second of smelling this on me. It's just a super situational fragrance. I could never wear something like this every single day. But man, when it comes to pulling that cap and smelling this fragrance, it's one of my favorites in my collection currently, so it had to be in this video. It's Mancera Black Prestigium. The ultimate springtime fragrance, in my personal opinion, based on Francis Kirkjohn. Aqua Celestia Forte. Uh, I reference this fragrance mm, from time to time. Let me get it a little bit closer so it'll focus. Come on, meow. There we go. So this is lime, mint leaf, pettigrain, nice and fresh green, juicy citrus, casual, but not quite, I don't want to say classy, I do want to say quality. Casual and very high quality. Great performance, too. This one sticks to the skin for me for, you know, every bit of eight, nine hours. And uh, it smells great. The quality is superb. Man, so versatile. You can rock this one with anything and everything. Sure, it works fine in the summer, but it's such a heavy, fresh green element fragrance that I can't help but think of springtime. I pretty much exclusively wear this one in the springtime. It is my favorite MFK fragrance. I have... You know, I have my share of, you know, in the Discovery set and my experience with them. I don't have a lot of full bottles from them, but this one is just, I'm so glad I have the 70 ml. And don't get me wrong, the 70 ml will last me a long time, but every spring I look forward to wearing this one. It's still one of my favorite fragrances. Maison Francis Kirkjohn, Aqua Celestia Forte. So the x straight toppled the original Eau de Parfum, because the Eau de Parfum was my favorite fragrance from Argos. We're talking about Triumph Abacus. And in this case, we're talking about Triumph Abacus X Straight. First and foremost, let's take a moment to look at this gorgeous plate. It's the same detail, only now there's all this enamel paint work. You have these little red ruby looking jewels. It's beautiful. He elevated the presentation, did some laser etching. You see Christian's name, Argos logo. He etched my full name in the bottom of the glass here because he does the laser etching now. But 40% concentration. It's ridiculously potent and long-lasting. It's a very rich fragrance. It wears heavy, like you would think. High oil concentration like that. Man, it smells good, though. <sighs> Boozy tobacco, fruity sweet, a little spicy. I get more spice out of the extrait than I do the Eau de Parfum. I love Triumph Abacus. I love the scent profile. This and Zaharoff Signature Tobacco are my two favorite tobaccos ever that I've ever smelled. And... I just absolutely had to feature this. Um, I could have put the Eau de Parfum here, but I do think somehow, some way, by raising that oil concentration, he did manage to elevate it. So I gotta go with the Extrait here. I've been loving smelling this one lately. It's Triumph Abacus Extrait from Argos. This next one was one I needed to check off the list. I'd been procrastinating getting a bottle for several years. I've been having a 20 ml official travel atomizer for a long time from the brand, but Spice Bomb Fresh from Victor and Rolf. I'm glad to have finally added a bottle to my collection so I can spray a bit more liberally now because I had, you know, a nice dent in my 20 ml, but now I have the bottle. I love Infrared Eau de Parfum, the newest release. I think of what's available in the market, it is the best version of Spice Bomb to me, but this is the best one they've ever made. This, to me, this was the highlight, the peak. They need to put another fresh Spice Bomb out. Uh, blue fragrance is what I'm thinking they'll do totally taking credit for that if so those of you that know why know why but this is so good grapefruit sea salt and still maintains that spicy somewhat tobacco-y type of core dna uh, this is and was just such a great offering for any of you that live in a warm climate this is the spice bomb to own it still has all of the beauty and character of the original just made to be fresher without being a much weaker fragrance. I still get seven or eight hours of longevity out of this. 
just like I do with the original Eau de Toilette that's a heavier fragrance. This is some good stuff. I'm glad to finally have it in my collection. I was a little torn and almost went with infrared Eau de Parfum here, but I was like, nah, I'm way more excited to have this. So I had to go with Spice Bomb Fresh from Victor and Rolf. Another man, Sarah, that I couldn't leave out. Um, I get excited when I see other people in my live chat saying they're wearing it as their scent of the day. It is Mansara Tonka Cola. I might be the person on YouTube that likes this fragrance the most. I don't really think too many people give it the kind of praise I give it. Some people don't even like it. it it's a subjective and taste-driven thing, just like I always talk about. Not everybody likes everything the same. But man, I just love that spicy cherry cola smell that it has, a little powdery and sweet. But the spice here, really, it's a bright, vibrant spice. Almost gives the resemblance to being the carbonation to the Cherry Coke. Great performer, too. I just love the way this smells. I, I think this was such a great release for them. It gets compared on the forums to kind of a take on Enigma or Creation E, however, which, wherever you live, depends on what it's called in your area, from Raja Parfums. Slight resemblance. This is way more about spice and powdery tonka bean, whereas that's way more about sweet booze, cognac, tobacco, heliotrope. Like, there's... There's some similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. This is a more stripped-down fragrance versus something like that. That's way more complex and deep. But, man, this is just a guilty pleasure fragrance of mine. So I had to feature it. It's definitely one of my favorite fragrances. It's Mancera Tonka Cola. I got to give it to Paco Rabanne. The last several 1 million releases have been really good. But for me, the one I gravitate to the most is the Parfum. For being a sweet bubblegum fragrance, it still has that summer feet in the sand appeal. This creamy tuberose. It's almost got this sunscreen-esque type of smell to it. Plus bubblegum. It literally smells like pink bubblegum. My wife's a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of it. This is a very playful fragrance. Not everybody's going to like something like this. But in the summertime, spring, fall, whenever, but mainly in the summertime, this is a fun, sweet fragrance. There's certain ones that just kind of do it for me, hence Le Beau Le Parfum, like we mentioned earlier. This one kind of falls into a similar vein, not quite as tropical, obviously, but gives me a similar vibe. This is one I've actually worn to the beach for beach activities, believe it or not, in the middle of summer out here in the Florida Panhandle. Yes, a sweet one million flanker. Just works, what can I say? And I love it. Paco Rabanne. One million parfum. I've got a variation of batches of this fragrance, and I think this particular bottle is my favorite. But Sensual Obsessions Bond Number no. Nine Andy Warhol Clone has been and always will be my favorite plum fragrance, and just one of my favorite fragrances. And all in all, I only wear this one around December in the winter. Um, oud funk, warm amber, a little bit of spice, and a rich, juicy, sweet plum note that dominates the fragrance. This is the happy medium that I like. There's an exact match now that's a little bit more warm, dry, woody, not quite as funky. I like this version. This is some of the older style. Every version he's put, Kevin's put out of this fragrance has been phenomenal. But it's something about this one in particular. This is, uh, I think this was Andy Warhol 2.0 technically was the official name for this one. Love it. You get any version of it. The newer version's King Andy, less funk. They have the exact match that has the oud funk and so on. You're good with any of them. Great performer. I have gotten my share of compliments from my varying different batches over the years, but this will never not be in this video as far as I'm concerned. Bond number nine, Andy Warhol, but it's Sensual Obsessions version. I sprayed this fragrance for the first time in a long time in this past week, and it reminded me of the magic easily my favorite from Montal, Honey Oud. If you know, you know, this is that jam. Beautiful, beautiful rich honey smell, vanilla, powdery, warm, oudy smell that's not too funky, but there is a bit there and you got a ton of cinnamon here. That's what really spices this thing up. It's so good. Powerhouse, monster performer in my experience. Four or five sprays and I mean, you are filling any room you walk in. This is a three to four sprayer for me when I'm feeling frisky because it's so strong on my skin. I don't wear this one all that often. It's a very situational fragrance, but it is a very beautiful fragrance and one that I still hold in the highest of regard. It's still my favorite from Montal. So we've got five total Pierre Montal creations in this particular video. What can I say? I love the man's work and some of his best work he's ever done, according to me anyways, is Honey Oud. Now, the top five is actually my top five. The previous 15, 
put them numbered wherever you want, but these are my five favorite fragrances. This has not changed in a little while. And I very much debated, just a quick honorable mention, because I was blown away by this. I have a travel atomizer of Aaron Terrence Hughes Ohm. This is potentially the best iris fragrance I've ever smelled. It's one of, for sure. This is a very simplistic, creamy, powdery, slight musky type of iris. Very buttery and smooth. Beautiful fragrance. It didn't quite crack into the top 20, but it's very noteworthy and a, a good honorable mention that I wanted to get into before we dive into the actual main five that is my top five in my entire collection that's been the same for a solid year now. So one quick honorable mention, Aaron Terrence Hughes Ohm is that jam for iris lovers. Now into that five, one of the most versatile fragrances I've ever smelled, Mancera's Cidrat Boisse. The final Mancera in the video, sure, I love the hell out of the Intense. Hell, I wore the Intense two days ago, okay? The Intense is beautiful, it's warm, it's spicy, it's a bit more animalic. This is fresher, this is more fruity, versatile, playful, all the things that make it such a great fragrance. Man, I still stand by this one. It still performs pretty good on me. It's not a beast, but it's not an average performer either. You can still get it for an affordable price from many, many places from discounters online. It's easy to find. It's not super expensive. It's still my first recommendation for a relatively safe play if you're going to start diving into like beginner level niche. I think this is such a great stepping stone to kind of work your way into that where it, this is this could be a mainstream designer fragrance with just a little bit better quality but it smells like a wicker basket full of fruits sharp lemon rich black currant has smells like grapes and apples and all these different things going on a um, little touch of leather like i said with some dry like cedar type of smell beautiful fragrance my number five mancera cedrat boise my number four is I don't know if it can ever be topped from the house. It's my favorite Zaharoff fragrance. It's my favorite rose fragrance. It's my favorite incense fragrance. It's Zaharoff Signature Rosé. It's such a stunner. Not for everyone. Rose incense. Totally not for everyone. But, man, you want to talk about blindside people when they smell this on you. Memorable experiences where people have had to stop me to ask me what I'm wearing because I smell so good. I love the sillage on this. It's a sweeter rose on my wife. She has her own bottle. It's a more incense, smoky, dominant rose on my skin. Uh, I find the oud comes out a little bit more on Justin, where you get more of that warm wood smell. It's Different skin chemistries offer different nuance, but this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance that even with black rose here on the horizon, which is the first fragrance I can honestly say comes close to trying to attack this one on its perch. Leather tobacco got close. It got real close to where I was calling it 1B to this being 1A. But man, Black Rose has stepped into that role to be 1A and 1B. They are wildly different Rose experiences, but this is such a special experience that I don't know if anything's ever going to topple it because I look at it in just a special light, its own unique light. Easily. One of my favorite fragrances. This one's never going anywhere when it comes to this topic it will maintain its place in my top five zaharoff signature rose now this is the biggest reason i didn't put ath ohm in here because this is a more animalic take on that and the more i've given time to think about it because it was in a live stream that i gave that 9.75 to ath ohm i still like dior on parfum a little bit more it's a slim margin. Don't get me wrong. That is one of the best ever. And so is this. This is the old style 75 ml. It's a 2019 batch code from the 2014 formula before they switched in 2020 to the 100 milliliter formulas. Rich, dark leather, oud smell, a bit of rose, powdery, waxy iris, and it transitions into a creamy sandalwood. It goes from dark to light as it changes. It's a very two-staged kind of fragrance. I'm so here for this. This is such a great fragrance. I have a sealed 75 ml of the same batch code that may never get opened, but I don't care. I'd rather this profile, I'd rather my two bottles of this fragrance outlive me than ever run the risk of not having sprays available for as long as I live and can smell. 
because I like the way this smells that much. Very situational. I only wear it a few times a year, but I do make it a point to wear it at least a few times a year because I have like 16, 1700 fragrances at this point. So it's still one of my absolute family. I mean, hell, it's top three here. This is number three. Phenomenal. Beast, two to four sprays, depends on how I'm feeling. Monster at every level. Even one spray. Trust me, you'll smell me. This is an absolute beast on my skin, but one of the greatest fragrances, let alone iris fragrances. One of the greatest fragrances ever created, in my opinion, and definitely one of my favorites, is Diorome Parfum. I remember the first time I smelled this when we were doing some Zed Creators 2.0 stuff in Chicago, and Justin was wearing this, and I was blown away. I was floored. I complimented him probably eight or nine, maybe even ten times that day. 13, 14 hours into our day, he came to my hotel room. We were going to film some content late that night. He walked by me through the door. I said, did you respray? I said, no, that's the same sprays from like 8 o'clock this morning. And it was like 1 in the morning. So, I was, oh no, it was like 11 o'clock at night. So it was like 14, 15 hours later, something like that. We're talking about Vertus Vanilla Oud. I fell in love with this scent profile that day. It smelled so good. Burnt vanilla, saffron spice, a little smoky, very woodsy. The oud here is a little funky, but not too bad. There's a musky, warm, musky tone. It's a little animalistic. There's a lot going on here, but that's the main things I smell. And for me, I get a similar experience in performance to what I watched and witnessed Justin get in performance on this. This is a three to four spray fragrance. That's all day until you take a shower. The Siaz just stays alive. It just keeps going. It's such a beautiful wearing experience to have this fragrance on skin. To the point to where I rank it above these two fragrances that I just explained to you how special they are to me. That's how I feel about this. Not everyone's going to feel the way I feel about Virtus Vanilla Oud. I have put a ton of hype on this fragrance here on the internet in the past year. And I stand by it, guys. Just because I feel this way does not mean you will. I would encourage you to sample it. Please don't blind buy it just because I'm absolutely in love with it. But if you do, I sure as hell hope you like it even half as much as I do because this is, this is the second greatest aroma experience I've ever had in my life. I absolutely love this fragrance. Another one that's not going anywhere out of this top two. It could potentially drop down a spot or two. As I discover new fragrances, you never know. But where we stand right now, my number two favorite fragrance ever is Vertus Vanilla Oud. And some of you that follow the channel on a regular basis, you know I've, this is the only 10 out of 10 I've ever given in an overall rating on an individual fragrance review before. Because for me, my lifestyle, my taste, my situation, my personality, Raja Parfum's Isola Blue, is literally the perfect fragrance for me. If I was to wear one fragrance all the time, a signature scent, if you will, this is literally the one I would need to go with. First and foremost, look at that color blue. Good Lord. Gorgeous. There's a sweet citrus here, some greens, a little bit of tropical tones like coconut. There's some florals. There's musks. There's woods. There's all these different things. Raja Dove puts a lot of fragrance oils and blends these very complex fragrances. Now, it's not as dense as its predecessor. This is a rebottling formula of Oligarch Parfum. Now, if that was still in production, we would put that right here because it is a little bit more dense, but it is the same exact scent profile. It's just not quite as loud, but it's still crazy long-lasting on my skin. This is a beautiful wearing experience for me. I can't pinpoint picture or think at all of one situation, season, anything that this doesn't work for. From board shorts at the beach to a tank top to a sleeveless shirt at the gym, training if I wanted to, going to work, casual Dr. Britt Baker wrestling t-shirt, okay? Whatever, doesn't matter. Oxford polo, suit and tie, black tie, this works. The reason it gets a 10 from me, quality, performance, profile, development, versatility. That's a big one for me, versatility. That's why I claim this to be perfect for me. Not everybody's going to feel like it's a 10. I feel like it's a 10. I hoard 10s. I never give 10s, but I gave this a 10. That's why it's my number one. <sighs> Magnificent. We're going to spray on the wrist a little bit. 
because now for the rest of the evening until I take my shower, I am going to enjoy this scent profile. So uh, if you have a similar taste to me, let this be me strongly encouraging you to try this. Don't blind buy this. This is a very expensive 50 ml fragrance. Really, you shouldn't blind buy any of these, especially based off of my opinion. You need to try these for yourself if you're interested in them. But this is the one. This is the one. I strongly encourage you, get a decant, get a sample. Go for the travel atomizer. It goes a long way. It's not. It's pricey. It's 7.5 ml, but 7.5 ml goes a long way, this fragrance. It is a pure parfum. It's a rich oil. But this is the 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. This is the number one fragrance. My number one favorite fragrance in my collection is Raja Parfums Isola Blue. So I knew this was going to be a long video. I appreciate those of you that stuck it through all the way to the end. That's dedication right there. I sure appreciate that. Until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Now, some, some of you may be like, well, I can't believe you didn't put this. I can't believe you didn't put that. And... Most of the people that are going to comment that in the comment section aren't making it to this point in the video. I can, I can tell you now. Because um, when I really looked at the collection, it's like, man, so much. I'm going to hear so much BS in my comment section because everybody figures what my favorite needs to be. Because there's a lot of fragrances that I really, really enjoy that are behind me. I got a ton of great stuff. I really do. But not all of them can be in the top 20. It's just what it is. I could have did a top 50 easily. It had just been an hour long video, you know, uh, more than an hour because we're raw footage. We're almost 34 minutes here before I do any editing. So I appreciate all of you for watching through. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe before you leave, like we mentioned a moment ago. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of my 20 favorites in my collection currently at the recording of this on January 4th of 2024, you give me a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. In fact, you probably will. Have a good one, guys.